Okay, so I've now fixed a piece of wood to my timber, uh, and that should enable the bit, this thickness of fence to clear my vice, all right? So we're just gonna... Finish it off. go down to 10 mil and I found that quite satisfying doing that. Um, then we're going to put our rebate on and I've previously set up the the rebate plane to do 15 where are we? Sorry I've got to do it that way around. 15 mil by 10 mil deep. Alright you're looking at it upside down. So 15 mil by 10 mil deep. And again, the same with the rebate plane, we're just going to have it, you'll see there's a little nick in the blade and it pops onto that adjuster. And you just nip up the cap, this is the cap iron, this is the cap iron here. We just nip it up and then just wind. If you do it too tight, you can't adjust your blade, yeah? So you want your blade just out a little tiny bit, just out a little tiny bit there, that's right there. Just need them to come out a bit. All right, let's give that, and then nip it up again. All right, you kind of get a feel for this. Too far out. All right, so let's just take him back a bit. So this was rusty because it's not been not been used for a while. Again, it was in my toolbox. So it's forefinger again on the handle and try and push that against the timber. When you're starting out, you may have to be deliberate with it. If you want, um, set up a, a marking gauge with this as well, and I'm actually running off as you can see, so I'm going to have to trim that with a chisel. I think I could have done with um, maybe a, a long fence on my. screw a, a timber fence to the metal fence make it a bit longer so we'll just get ourselves back on track yeah so you can use a marking gauge to mark your depth and also mark your width two hands behind the chisel and all my fingers See if we can. I don't know why it wants to drift so much. Wobbling around a bit too much as well, aren't we? 
See if that will sit down a bit better. a bit with a shoulder plane. Like I say, you can you can use a marking gauge to um, Set your depths and your widths. Better. So we're getting there. We just go a wee bit deeper. If you get any shaving stuck in there, then we'll um, you'd be tempted to use a screwdriver, but use a pencil because you're going to wreck your blade otherwise. Got a couple of that two or three mil to go, all right. So let's just check it. Yeah, ten, ten. Yeah. So there you go. Alright, so that's your rebate. That's your rebate. You can see that. You might be able to see it better like that, might you? That's your rebate and that's your groove. So the groove was first with the power plane. And then we used the rebate plane. Now, like I said, you can use the mortise gauge with the two points to run a, a groove down there to work to. And you can actually use a um, marking gauge to mark these. So if this was 10 by 15, you could, mark it at, you could mark it at 14 by nine and then just clean the last mill off with your shoulder plane. Because don't forget, when, when your marking gauge goes in, it leaves a V groove. So you want to mark it a mill, half a mill, don't you? Yeah. And you just clean the you clean that mark off then with your um, you clean that mark off then with your um, plane. I'm going to do a chamfer now. I'm going to do just a small chamfer with a block plane. Now you just mark a chamfer with a pen, a pen or a pencil, and um, you could use a combination square to gauge it. But as you can see, I'm just going to do it like this and pop it in a vise. And I'll use my block plane, which I don't think my block plane's that sharp. I can't remember. I might have sharpened it up the other day. All right, so ideally, when you've got this adjustable mouth, you just want that to be a couple of mil away. Just a couple of mil away. I'm going to hold it like that, all right? But if you have trouble, you could hold it like that and squash it in a sash cramp and then clamp the sash cramp into the vise, all right? Because I've been doing it a while. I'll probably get away with just doing it by hand, right? So I'll thumb on the top but and fingers underneath, but just make sure you don't bash your fingers into the end of the timber. And just a small I must have sharpened it up. And just a small chamfer. And what we're looking for is we're looking that for that to be flat, nice and flat. All right. Don't want it to be rounded. All right. 
You can see that. You can use a, a smoothing plane. A smoothing plane or a block plane will do that. Um, realistically, if you were making this, it was part of a job, you'd probably give yourself 100 mil each end just for runoff. Or you can see, look, where my plane's been in the um, in the shed and it's got rusty, I've cleaned the rust off just, just now, look. All right, so that'd be, your, if you were coming to us to do a course, that'd be Carpentry 101, learning basic basic hand tools uh, and what to how to use them. All right.